Hey everybody, I'm Polygon's Ben Kachera, and with me today is PC Perspectives Ryan Trout. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. And this is something a little bit different than the entry-level system you put together for us before. You're looking at around $2,500. Right. What CPU is in here? That's a $570 part to begin. This is the uh, Core i7-5930K. So this is Haswell E based. Mm -hmm. uh, the E meaning enthusiast. Uh, this is actually a six core processor mm -hmm. uh, with 12 threads, so six core hyper threaded. Um, so you're going to have significantly more processing capability than the last processor mm -hmm. we discussed. And you said this is a different platform, so it necessitated a change in motherboard as well. Right. And the motherboard is now a $230 part, give or take. Um, outside of the fact that it's on a higher end platform, what do you get for the extra money? So it's a different chipset. Uh, this uses a quad channel memory. So you have to, in order to get maximum performance out of it, you have to have four different memory, mo memory modules. Um, so the, the motherboard socket is bigger. The memory, uh, what it takes up is bigger. You're also getting eight SATA ports on this. You're getting multiple M.2 ports that run at a higher speed. At $236, that's more than double the cost of the previous board. Mm -hmm. But you can get five and $600 motherboards on this platform easily. So again, this is kind of a, a budget conscious high-end product. And it gives you room to grow. There's a yeah. plenty of places you can take this board in the future yeah. if you want to. Tell us about the RAM a little bit. So, I mean, again, memory more or less a commodity. Uh, this is, we went with uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum, 16 gigs, 3,000 megahertz, 3 gigahertz mm. uh, DDR4. Four DIMMs on here in order to necessitate or to fill up the quad-channel memory controller. Uh, 200 bucks for the memory kit kind of gets you a good balance of capacity and speed. Let's get to the GPU, and this is where we're going to start to get into some really expensive parts. This is yeah. a, a 980 Ti. It's around $650. Yep. So the, the GeForce GTX 980 Ti is the highest performing single GPU graphics card you can get today, mm -hmm. right? So it's the highest end single GPU. Uh, we have uh, up here we have the ASUS Strix edition. So it's got a, a, a bigger cooler, a much quieter cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, it has kind of um, tweaked power delivery on the PCB design. We also have another one here worth mentioning as well. And this is one of the interesting things when we're talking about building specifically for VR. This is a card that's specifically for VR. It is, in fact, it, it's EVGA's VR edition yeah. of the 980 Ti. So actually, if you look at it, if you've seen a 980 Ti kind of reference cooler design, it looks exactly the same. Like, nothing has changed. They offer both this and a, their, their own kind of custom cooler option. But what's different is on this backside here, yeah. There's an HDMI port on the back side of the video card. Not out here with your normal display connectors, but on the back. Which brings us to yeah, we this magic thing. This is, uh, <laughs> this is what kind of makes the VR edition from EVGA. So this is basically a five and a quarter inch panel mm -hmm. or bay that goes into, uh, into your case. And it has two USB 3.0 ports and an HDMI port on it. Which, it, it seems so silly. Why is that useful? If you are that much of a geek about VR, I would argue it is absolutely worth the extra $50. It's a little bit more convenient, and it's it's just also kind of cool to have that like yeah. ability to just pop it right in the front. Yeah. In, in terms of storage here, now we have a 512 gigabyte um, SSD, mm -hmm. and we have a four terabyte standard hard drive. Is there anything about these parts that we should remark on? The SSD here is a Samsung 950 Pro. It's more expensive uh, in terms of cost per gigabyte. It's actually this guy right here. This is the oh SSD. So this is an M.2 <laughs> SSD. This is a totally different form factor. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, this is actually way, way faster than a SATA-based SSD. Uh, it's rated at 2,500 megabytes per second read mm -hmm. and 1,500 megabytes per second write. My gosh. Totally unnecessary for, <laughs> for like gaming purposes, but for an enthusiast machine, this is awesome. It's over $300 for yeah. this part. But every time you load a game, you feel it. Like having quick loading time, being able to move data around quickly and being able to bring up games quickly, it never kind of goes out of style. Like it feels it's so good every much. time yeah, yeah. You, you get the, the system running. Do you want to talk about the standard? The, I mean, the only thing drive? I would mention about that is we went with the Western Digital Red Drive. Uh, those are kind of geared specifically towards uh, multi-drive arrays, if I were going to add another 150 bucks to it, is to add a second 4 terabyte drive, put them in a RAID 1 array, which is a mirrored array, mm. so that if one of the drives ever dies, you don't lose your data, mm. which is a really nice thing to do. Now that we are into the 980 Ti parts, what does that do to cooling and power supply? 
So everything's going to draw more power. So we have to increase our power supply. Uh, we're using a Corsair, what do I have here? The 750 watt Platinum. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got plenty of juice for single card, even for a second card. Uh, it's Platinum, meaning it's very efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's not going to waste a lot of power to generate the power it's doing. It's going to uh, run cooler. The fan will spin less often, so it's a little bit less noisy. Uh, and it's just overall a very high quality unit. And you want to have a high quality power supply basically for every gamer, but when you're using very expensive parts, you want to make sure uh, that you're using quality juice into those parts for sure. Mm. Uh, and then in terms of cooling, we are using a Corsair H100i GTX. I think they might be rebranding it as the H100i V2. Uh, it's a $100 self-contained water cooler, right? So it's water cooler is going to be much higher performance, uh, but it's also going to be fairly quiet. They're PWM fans, so they're fans that adjust their speed based on how much power is being used and how hot the CPU is, so it'll, it'll, it will uh, change things around there. The last thing to talk about, and like kind of literally the elephant in the room, is the case. Yeah. This, this is a large case. You can actually put all these components into a smaller case, probably, uh, without, any, without any issues, but um, bigger cases just tend to have uh, additional features. So this one we have here is the Corsair 600C. Uh, it's it's a unique design. I really like like the window on the side is enormous. Uh, it's basically like edge to edge. If you're gonna spend all this money on components, mm -hmm. you might as well see them as opposed to putting them behind you know a, inside a box that you never get to get to look at. Uh, it's inverted, which is nice. It's kind of an interesting design. Like all the components will be rotated 180 degrees than what you're used to, <laughs> um, which is why the window is on the other side of the system than you're used to. Uh, it has airflow improvements. It has filters on all the air intake. So if you've got cats or dogs or whatever, uh, it's easier to keep the inside of your PC clean. You just vacuum out those filters every once in a while. Uh, and it has a covered five and a quarter inch base. So even if you decide to go with this, if it's not plugged in, if you're putting it away, if you're unplugging it and putting it away, you can close it and you get that nice clean front. Wonderful. <laughs> this is not an entry level anything. No. This is a, approximately a 2,500 American dollar. <laughs> $2,500 is a lot of money, but it's not six thousand dollars, sure. right? Which, which you can still definitely buy systems for that. You definitely see where the money went. We oh, started yeah. with the the CPU on the 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme on the nine hundred dollar system. It was seven thousand one hundred. Uh, it's fourteen thousand three hundred here. The same sort of jump with the GPU with the the nine hundred dollar system. The score was uh, five thousand six hundred. With here, it is. 9,100 yeah. approximately. That's yeah, so a, you're that's looking nice like 80% uh, yeah. performance improvement there. It is definitely the case with GPUs. The higher the, the higher end of the workload, the more benefit you get from a higher end GPU kind of as it scales. Uh, we ran the Oculus check. Right. All checks. Thankfully, they had the tool had no complaints about <laughs> the system. Green check marks all around. Um, so the, the Steam VR score, which goes from red, your system is not ready to VR, um, to uh, all the way past the green. Yeah. And this scored an 11. Which is the maximum. Because, of course, if you're making a benchmark that scores in numeric digits, you make sure it goes to 11. Uh, and so this one does. <laughs> Until you said that. You didn't realize. I why. actually didn't put that together. <laughs> that's why they, I, it's the only reason I can think that they would do that. At the launch of the Rift, at the launch of the Vive, this isn't just fine, this is overkill. It is. So it, we talked about this uh, in the last video we did where a, a lot of the games, almost all of the games, are very targeted towards the men's spec, the recommended spec. Um, and only a handful of games uh, are really allowing you to stretch above that. Uh, we tested Eve Valkyrie, right? Remember mm -hmm. with Eve Valkyrie in the $900 system, it defaulted to all medium mm -hmm. in the settings. This system defaulted to high out of the box. But then we went ahead and obviously it played perfectly fine in that. And we went ahead and pushed everything up to ultra on it, which caused a tremendous amount of judder and stutter on the cheaper system that did not occur here, mm -hmm. right? So showing you that even if games don't default to using it, you still have that headroom, you still have you know wiggle room to play with those in-game settings for those applications that do have it. And I do believe that more games will have that in the future. What this gives you is the ability to grow with VR, to not have to if a brand new game comes out that really does push the boundaries, mm -hmm. you know you're going to be able to take advantage of it and use it as a showpiece.